this is Candice. Um, welcome to Highwire. I am sitting here with my good friend Dolly D. Hi. Um, I'm excited to have her on the show. She is actually the kind of the founder and the cornerstone of the burlesque scene here in Charleston, South Carolina. Um, and I'm excited to have stumbled upon it because I did not actually realize that there was such a big following that you have. <laughs> Um, so, welcome to High Wire. Thanks, Candace. Thanks for having me. <laughs> I'm happy to be here. Good, good. I'm glad you found me and asked me to be on your show. I know. We kind of stumbled upon your show at the mill, and <laughs> tell, let me tell you, we will be back. <laughs> um, for all of those followers, though, that aren't aware of what burlesque is and it entails, how would you kind of describe it to them? Okay, well, I guess I would start with burlesque. Basically, the word means to parody. Um, Back in the 1800s, Lydia Thompson uh, created a burlesque show to parody great plays, and it went national. She came overseas here to the States, and it was popularized. It's had its up and downs, I guess, through the mm -hmm. years, um, different, ri you know, different risings, and so then it would falter off a little bit. But I guess basically it is striptease. I won't lie about that, <laughs> it is, but more in a vintage classic sense. Um, there's also um, other different types of burlesque today. There's okay. neo-burlesque, mm -hmm. which is not so much the classic feathered fans, jewels and rhinestones. It's more of artistic interpretations through song and dance, mm -hmm. um, or variety, sideshow, any of that. Um, I mean, you could be a shark, uh, <laughs> you could be a monkey dressed up in a costume, if you saw that at my show, uh, Dancing to Brass Monkeys. I actually did, and I also saw <laughs> someone with a bubble, like a tub with bubbles in it, I yes, believe. <laughs> yes, yes, there's, um, it's basically whatever the artist interprets into a skit, and we call our performances skits, mm -hmm. because there's sometimes acting, sometimes comedy, sometimes tragedy. So boys, I'm sorry, but it's not just, you know, let me show you Not the boobies. just boobies, it's how you get to the boobies. <laughs> okay, that's a great way to explain yeah, it. Yeah, um, I mean, basically that's what it is. It's, uh, you know, you're just basically creating a way to take off your clothes or put them back on because there is reverse strip teasing. Oh goodness. And yes, I've seen a couple people do it. It's a little bit harder. But it's just finding different ways, different motions, different gimmicks um, to artfully, tastefully. Sometimes, you know, we all make fun of ourselves. We're very confident with who we are. We're not perfect tens by any means. Um, Barbie doesn't usually go hand in hand with any of us. We're more okay. curvy, classic beauties. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's beautiful. We're very body positive. Um, in the community. So basically, as I said, I mean, the reason why I love it and what it means to me basically is to be my own producer, my own um, costume designer, my own set director, my own choreogra choreographer. Um, I can do all those things in the comfort of my own home right. <laughs> and then travel on the road with them. I don't have to meet up with anyone. It's, it's, there's a lot of personal and artistic freedom in burlesque. I was going to say, it just seems like it's more of an art form and it's not just, you know, it's a means of expressing yourself and how you, how you feel kind of and, and displaying your confidence with yourself. And I definitely think that's a good message to send out to young women or, you know, however old. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, you can be any age. Uh, it goes from younger to, I know, lots of uh, the burlesque legends. There's one that actually lives here in town. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, there's ladies that have been doing, they're in their 80s, and they're legends, and they are worshipped <laughs> by the burlesque <laughs> community. Imagine. And um, they have Burlesque Hall of Fame in Las Vegas that they do every year, mm -hmm. and that's basically where they go. and. Um, they present, you know, the ladies that are still around that, some of them don't even know there's been a revival. Okay. Some of them are still coming on, they're older ladies, but the younger generations that are doing it pay great homage to these women and respect them greatly. That's good to yeah. see, you know, the support there. Um, can you tell us how you got into it? Um, sure. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. Um, <laughs> Well, I've always been a sci-fi convention goer <laughs> since I was 17 or so. My brother and I used to go to Star Trek conventions. I continued the legacy okay. going to Dragon Con where I would enter costume contests. I've been sewing since I was little. I've also, I call myself a retrophiliac. I love mm -hmm. everything vintage, anything old. I just love it. I want to know the story behind it. I love nostalgia and I've just always been that way. I've also 
I have a vivid imagination <laughs> and I also have a lot of anxiety, which has really? been a great therapy for me. Like just creating things, sculpting costumes, sculpting set pieces, okay. keeping myself busy. I mean, it's, it's been excellent therapy for me personally. So I guess um, my ex-husband was a theater professor mm -hmm. and we had the 60s psychedelic mod garage band called Hypno Squad. <laughs> I started with doing that, go-go mm -hmm. dancing, running the Hypnovac, which was this crazy supercomputer. I mean, it was just this ridiculous show. The music was awesome, but I wanted to do something a little bit different than a band. Mm -hmm. And I also wanted to bring my costumes out of the bedroom <laughs> other than just at the science exactly. fiction convention. Exactly, you actually wanted people to see it now. Yeah, and um, just, you know, this is pre-MySpace. I forgot what the social I'm not media even sure that time was before at MySpace. that point. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so I started noticing that there was a lot of people doing burlesque just okay. through pinup. I love, I love pinup photography, I love the pinup art, the style, everything. And I just, you know, Googling things, I would stumble across burlesque performers mm -hmm. on the West Coast or in New York. And this is, you know, back in 05 and 06. I was like, oh man, they've got something going on. Mm -hmm. I was like, I really want to do something different. I don't want to do a band. I don't want to do a shock band or another art band. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, I want to do something on my own where I can, you know, do things that I like and express them. And I was like, well, this kind of seems like it might work. So... I basically started talking about it and just decided I was going to do it and I met with Justice who was the original owner of the Tin Roof who okay. lived in New Orleans where Burlesque never really died. Mm -hmm. They have a big festival there and um, he, so he was aware of it and I think he was the right person to talk to because I don't think anyone else would have given me a chance. You're right. He was like, yes, please. Yeah. Bring us to I didn't me. even have a show together and he was like, yeah, here's your date. And I was like, oh. What am I gonna do? I gotta take. And now. now we're stuck. <laughs> now I gotta make a show. So that's how it all started. That and is it just awesome. kind of snowballed from there. Now I've just have performed in Manhattan. Now it's international. Um, well, yeah. Well, saying. my festival has gone international. Okay. Yeah, I um I started the Charleston Burlesque Festival four years ago. Um, the next year I expanded it over a weekend instead of just one night mm -hmm. and then it became the Carolina Burlesque Festival because we got more of a regional appeal Okay. and it, um, and then last year it actually went international. So now it's the International Carolina Burlesque Festival and Sweet Teas competition. So um, yeah, this next year will be its fifth year, it's sold out consecutive consecutively since its inception right so and um, I have women come from all over the world to perform um, exhibit and compete all weekend long they also do workshops open to the public we also have plenty of after parties things like that so. <laughs> you just have a good old time yes we do have we, um, we actually have some pictures that you did oh yes um and I think they are definitely worth showing because I think they are hot oh. and they are awesome um, my favorite personally is the kind of the old 20 styles. You want to tell us a little bit how it was styling that shoe? Because I um, do understand you do your own makeup and your own hair. Yeah, um, for this shoe, this is actually a really old shot that I did probably like, I don't know, maybe seven years ago. Um, it was a tribute to the Ziegfeld Follies. So Minsky Malone. He started the Ziegfeld Follies. He, you know, had these theaters in New York. They were off Broadway. They were nickel theaters, like we talked about earlier. And most of the girls was back in the 20s and 30s. This is what they looked like. So um, I was very inspired by it. I think it's classic beauty. I love silent films. I love noir. It captured it all. And yeah, so that's where that came from. Those were actually my very first performance fans. Yeah, I would right say there. I have to show this one. I love the big <laughs> feathers and the dramatic and. I'm a big fan of that time too. Yeah. So anything classy like that, I just it, you really do a great job of bringing that back. Thanks. I have to say. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do understand from what I've read from you and um, what you we've, we've talked about. You do a lot of charity work. I do. Which is awesome. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, most of my shows I will always try, especially my free shows, my fan appreciation ones, like the one you saw me at at the mill. I do those there every couple months, every three months. Mm -hmm. um, they're free and there's usually, you know, that means there's not a door charge or anything, a cover or anything like that. So I'll try to find a charity for people to either donate supplies, like I've done school supply drives for... Mm -hmm. um, 
just an alternative school in North Charleston mm -hmm. where basically, you know, it's just um, a lot of, you know, needful children in the area that don't have their own school supplies. The school provides everything for them and they only get their supplies through donations or the state and they always run out. So we did a big drive for them and we got like a truckload of stuff, which was awesome. Right. I've done uh, canned food, non-perishable drives for homeless shelters around town. I've also done um, pet food drives for animals. Um, I've done um, portions of my ticketed sales at my theater shows um, go to usually a charity of my own and I've done women, battered women and children's shelters. I've donated to that. We also do a lot of work with the servicemen, um, whether they hire me as a pinup for their event or I work with the Pinup Angels, who is a pinup charity that takes care packages and delivers them to their troops. So, yeah, I like all kinds of charities. I like giving back. So, all that charity work, it sounds awesome. Uh, it's, it's good to see, you know, someone having a platform and actually using that to, to you know, reach out and, and better their community as much as they can. Um, so, how do we get in touch with you, Dolly? Um, well, you can get in touch with me um, dollyd.com, the Carolina Burlesque Festival.com, or the Dixie Pasty Mafia BC, which is a new burlesque club. It is Southeastern performers. We've all gotten together. We're like minded people. We want to take a little bit of the pageantry out of burlesque and keep our rock and roll roots. So, we're going more with a honky tonk sensibility. And um, that comes from my love with the biker community. They've really really accepted me in the last couple of years and their loyalty is just astonishing and so I like to keep a couple of my you know my anarchist rock and roll oh. punk rock roots and we <laughs> formed this committee it's southeastern burlesque performers all over the south from Tennessee to Georgia to New Orleans and it's a collective and what we're doing is we just basically want to you know, promote the more rock and roll, avant-garde, balls to the wall, in your face kind of performance art. So where can we see you next? What, next? What's going on? Well, next I will be at the Bull City Rumble, which is a vintage motorcycle rally in Durham, North Carolina. Then I'm going on tour with the legendary, not Guy Harvey, but Danny <laughs> B. Harvey. Um, he's a rock and roll guitar legend. He's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and the legendary Sky Page, who is one of my best friends. They asked me to come on tour. I'll be doing burlesque, and that's all the month of September. Okay. We'll be in Charleston, Georgia, Florida, all around performing, and then I'll be back home at the mill September 28th to give another fan appreciation free show, and it's a spaghetti western theme. It is the good, the bad, and the burly. Bring a fistful of dollars. <laughs> All right, I think that wraps it up. Thank you so much, Dolly. We are so excited to see your next shows. All right, thanks for having me. Thank I had you. so much fun. <laughs> thanks, guys. This has been Highwire. Good to have you with us.